Hello everyone, welcome back to the final video on building your first game for Coco's Creator. We now have the monster jumping, moving, and collecting stars that will be on the screen one at a time. Now let's add some scoring mechanisms, add a game over mechanic, and some sound effects to give your game what it needs to look like a complete game. So let's get back into our project. First, let's add scoring and show it on the screen. We're going to need a node that allows us to edit text. So, right click on the node tree and choose create. Create render node and click on the node with label. Make sure it's in the canvas and name it score. Let's place it in the middle of the screen at about the 0 and 180 position. In the strings property, let's write score colon 0. Set the font as 50 and let's give it a fun font. As you remember, we have this Mikado outline shadow font in our assets. Grab the one with the BF icon on the left and drag it into the font property. And now we have a score in the game. Awesome. Make sure you place the score in front of the background and the ground so it can be seen by the player. Now let's add a scoring script to keep count of the score and reset it when the game's over. Let's open the game script and let's add a new property of score display. And let's make sure the score is zero when you open the game by adding a variable called score to the online function. And let's set it at zero. Now we need to update the scores by adding a new method called gain score inside the update method. Give it a function that adds one point to the score and changes the text on the screen. Save the file and let's move to the star script. Let's open the star script and add one more function inside the onPicked method. Add this dot game dot gain score. Now we can call the function from the game script to add at one point when the star is picked. Let's save this and test it out. Let's save this and test it out. It should allow us to collect new stars and scores add up as we do it. Now that the scoring is done, just two more things left. Time to make the game challenging by forcing the player to collect stars before they disappear. Let's open the game script and let's add a few lines of code. First, on the onload function inside the game script, we'll add a timer and a star duration. This will allow us to set up a timer. So, in the onload function, let's add the timer and set it to zero and the timer duration. The duration is set randomly by the min and max star duration that we built already in the game script. Now, let's make the logic for the timer every time a new star is made. So let's add this randomized number creator to the spawn new star function so that when a new star is made, a new time duration is created as well as the timer is set back to zero. Finally, we need to make sure that the game knows that the game is still playing or needs to be called game over. Go to the update function and let's add logic behind this with a check to see if the game is still running or if not, game over. If it's still going on, we need to add time to the timer. All right, now that we have all the things ready for when the game is on, now we need to have one for when the game over happens. So now let's get to the game over function. What it should do is it should stop everything and reload the game. Let's do this by adding two functions to the game over method. As you can see, we are calling on the director. The director is like any you would see on a movie set. It tells everyone what to do. In this function call, we are telling the game to stop everything and then start over again with load scene game function call 
which will start the game back to the beginning. Now that we have that done, save the script and let's move back to the star script. We need the star to show that the timer is almost running out by making the star slowly disappear. Go to the update method and let's play with the opacity of the star. By adding these lines of code, we'll be able to have it disappear at the same speed as the star duration. Save the script and save your project. Now, test it out. You have yourself your first game, but we aren't done yet. No, no game is not complete without sound effects. So, we have two sound effects, one for jumping and one for collecting the star. Let's first complete the jumping sound. To do this, let's add a sound to the player. Open up the player script and let's add a component option called Jump Audio. We're going to call the cc.audio clip as this is the function that can play sounds. We'll talk more about sounds in the future. Next, we need to add sound whenever the player hops up. So, go to the set jump action method and let's add a variable that holds the audio file. Next, let's build a new method called Play jump sound. This function invokes the sound to be played. Our final task, adding the star collecting noise. Let's go back to the game script. and let's add a score audio property. And then add playing the effect in the game score function. Now save both the player and the game scripts and go back to Coco's Creator. You can now drag the sounds into the player and the canvas node and save the project. There we go, our final game. If you weren't able to get to this point, you can always go back to the project folder and choose the complete underscore project folder and look through where you made a mistake. But that's it. Congratulations on making your first game. I hope this series of videos helped you understand Coco's Creator and you'll want to make even more games. If you want to make even more games, check out our forums for more tutorials and ask questions if you have any issues with this or any other tutorial. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe as we're going to be making more tutorial videos in the future. And we always have great interviews with developers using Coco's Creator for their games. So thank you for listening and have fun making your own games with Coco's Creator.